Good morning, my dear students. This is Miss Moss speaking. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our online English literature session for class 5. I hope all of you have washed your hands and then come to your computers, mobiles or whatever device you're using for this class. Anyway, come, let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you, we come before you and ask you to bless us. Be with us, Lord. Guide us, help us, protect us, especially from this virus. We pray, Lord, that very soon, all of us can come back to our normal lives, go to school, meet our friends, be comfortable moving about with our parents and our families. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. And we pray, Lord, for all those people who are suffering, that they may be healed. We thank you, Lord, for the, you, Lord, for the food that we get to eat, the house that we have to protect us, the clothes that we have to wear and we lift all those people up who don't have any of these and ask you Lord to be merciful with people around them who will help them. We also thank you Lord for our nurses and doctors and all the other people who are out there helping others. We pray, Lord, that you bless them all abundantly. Amen. Tell me, boys, how have you been spending your weekends? Of course, this side, we've had long weekends. In fact, the whole week seems to be one weekend. On a normal day, for us, Saturdays and Sundays are very special, isn't it? Don't you like to spend your weekends? Mama allows you to play extra. Papa spends more time with you. You can do whatever you want besides just studying and complete, just studying and completing your notes and s finishing things. So today I'm going to tell you a story about a little boy who, like you and me, enjoyed his Saturdays and Sundays, but didn't wait just for his weekends. He adventurous and would always be up to some kind of mischief. And don't we know when we do something wrong, even if it's unintentional, if we get caught, what happens? So today, the story I've chosen to teach you I give you an exercise is the summary of the story of Tom Whitewashers taken from your literature book Dream Catchers. It's a beautiful reader. The name itself says so much. Anyways, anyways, the story of Tom Whitewashers has been taken from the famous novel of Mark Twain's called The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And yes, as the name goes, the entire story is a bomb. Tom Sawyer lived with his aunt Polly, his cousin Mary, and his half-brother Sid. Sid was a very quiet boy, but Tom, on the other hand, he loved adventure, as I said before and was, was always up to mischief. One day, instead of going to school, he bunked school and he had gone swimming instead with his friends. But to his bad luck, his aunt found out, found out. And she was furious. So she decided to punish him. Have you ever been punished for anything? Yes, you have, haven't. 
This is about Tom. His punishment was of a different kind. He was not asked to sit on a stool to look at the wall. He was not asked to stand on a bench and raise his hands. He was not asked to stand in the corner and hold his ears. But instead, Aunt Polly, but instead, Aunt Polly was so strict that she asked him to whitewash the fence. And it was no ordinary fence. The fence was of 30 yards and 9 feet high. So Tom's heart sank. He felt very, very depressed at the thought of spending his whole weekend just painting or whitewashing that fence. It seemed like a burden for him. He sighed because he had no choice as he took the paintbrush and dipped it into the bucket. He went along the topmost plank of that fence and he repeated the operation. But there was no interest as but there was no interest as such. He was upset from within as he was only thinking about his friends who were enjoying their Saturday playing somewhere. He felt really discouraged. He knew it was going to take him more than just half the day to complete that. Just then, one little boy by the name of Jim came skipping along out of the house with a pail. Pail means bucket. Yeah, he was carrying that pail down pump. And Tom knew that every time Jim went to fill water, he would enjoy himself there because he'd meet up with the other boys and girls and play around. So Tom thought of an idea. He thought and then called out to Jim. Jim, could you please come here and help me? If you take this brush and paint the fence, Tom said, I'll go and fill the pail for you. But Jim was so scared of Aunt Polly that he refused point blank. I'm so sorry, Tom, he said. It's just not possible for me to do it. You know Aunt Polly, she'll come and give me a good thrashing. So Tom thought of bribing him. He offered him a white marble. Jim began to waver. He started to think about it. Tom, seeing his expression, thought of throwing in another attraction. So he told him, if you do so, I'll show you my saw meaning hurt. It had a little piece of cloth tied around it. So Jim took the marble and bent over just to see that toe. And all of a sudden, he heard Aunt Polly's voice from the back. Oh my, oh my gosh. Jim was so afraid that he just took off like a boomerang out of that place. Tom had no choice. He, poor guy. He just had to pick up the brush, dip it in the bucket and start his strokes of whitewashing. Tom's sorrow multiplied. He was really depressed, upset and miserable. He could no longer even pretend to smile. He kept thinking of all the boys and girls that were free and playing around of all the boys and girls that were free and playing around while he had to whitewash this fence. Just as he was giving up and had no hope, a boy named Ben Rogers came along munching an apple. Ben was the same boy that Tom dreaded meeting. Ben always made fun of Tom and ridiculed him in front of others. So Tom hated his sight.
Ben, noticing that Tom was so interested in his work and involved in the whitewashing, was eager to take the brush and try it himself. So he told Tom to let him try it once, but Tom refused and said it was not possible for Ben to complete to complete that. Ben agreed to do anything as long as he handed him the brush. Tom sighed and very reluctantly for his apple and agreed to give him his brush. Ben wasn't the only boy that Tom played this trick with. As the day went by, Tom had other boys with different with different things to offer and handed them the brush from time to time to complete his task. In the end, he was a very rich boy and the owner of 12 marbles, a piece of chalk of tadpoles, hmm. part of a Jew's harp, a piece of blue bottle glass to look through, a key that wouldn't unlock anything, a fragment of chalk, a glass stopper of a decanter, of a decanter, a tin soldier, six firecrackers, a kitten with only one eye, a brass doorknob, a dog collar, and yet no dog. Four pieces of an orange peel, can you believe it? And a dilapidated old window sash. These were just a few that I'm naming, but they were his new treasures. He idled while the boys stood around painting the fence. Ultimately, they painted the fence three times over. Yes three times over. If he had not run out of whitewash, he would have bankrupted every chi child in the village. So Tom ultimately, as we see, completed the fence even without doing much. Wasn't it a lovely story? I hope you liked it. Now I'm going to